What's up guys, it's Mike Barkoff here for Redoing Reels for Live Free. Um, uh, <laughs> this is kind of a rocky start. I haven't done one of these in a while. I filmed them in advance, but um, this is the first episode. It would be of season two. I want to apologize for any background noise. My cat is currently eating in this plastic. But um, today I'm going to talk about Nightmare on Elm Street and how you can make a definitive trilogy out of the first, third, and seventh films. Uh, the main primary thing that holds all of these films together is that Heather Langenkamp, uh, I believe I'm pronouncing her name right, appears um, as Nancy in the first and the third, and as herself, the actress in the real world in the seventh. Wes Craven is also in the seventh. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so well, she appears as herself in the seventh. The seventh one is set in the real world. Her character herself, die her character itself, or themself, dies in the third film. Um, the first, third, and seventh films are also among the best films, uh, and I know that's an opinion piece, but I think a lot of people would agree with me. Um, I've come to learn to enjoy the fourth and fifth for what they are. I have a really hard time enjoying the sixth, yeah, the sixth one, uh, Freddy's Dead, because it's really cheesy and it's just, it's not a very good film. Um, the second one I have uh, uh, tremendously changed my opinion on over time, but I still think it is horrible. <laughs> um, the second one has a really good concept, but it's just done really bad. So the first one, of course, is classic. The third one is also, I would argue, classic. For me, at least, why I think the third one is definitely a lot more enjoyable because it's more relatable, um, and that's kind of what I look for in horror films. Uh, stuff that's not too far-fetched, which Nightmare on Elm Street's already pretty far-fetched. So that's really the one thing that, uh, you know, that's the ground wire for me to be an audience member with those films. Um, and that's why I really appreciate the seventh one, because the seventh one does uh, kind of like a Chucky type of look on the series, where they go into the real world and they uh, are actually filming a new uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movie, and they're trying to figure out um, it, what the hell is going on, because they're having dreams with Freddy Krueger, and they're starting to wonder, is this a fictional character, or is this actually a non-fictional character? You know, it's something that they didn't expect. Um, and that's definitely why those three films, I think, should just be considered the definitive trilogy. Uh, I know you're not getting a lot of Freddy Krueger's backstory there, you're not getting him dying, uh, but you really don't need that because uh, at the end of the third film, I think you're kind of at a point where uh, he's, he's going to live on. And um, so to go on for three more films that are each mediocre to shitty, um, you know, it, 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 it's beneficial for a first-time audience member especially to just skip those because then that'll kind of tarnish your idea of the series and, um, you know, the seventh one just really is superbly better, <laughs> supremely better than the fourth, fifth, to sixth and um, I'm sorry guys, I'm blanking on words a little bit. I just think that the seventh one really plants the series in a good direction because of the fact that you know Freddy's not going to die. You know that Freddy's not real um, in the real world outside of the films, I suppose. So you know that seeing him, I guess what I'm trying to say is seeing him in that seventh film and then having your own self kind of question like, damn, is he real? Like, he's not real in real world, but like in this real world set inside of the fictional universe, kind of a meta type thing. Is he real? You know, it adds a lot of uh, layers to it, and especially seeing him come back uh, all, you know, decked out, looking different. Um, it's a great film, honestly, and it wouldn't have been possible for Scream to have gotten made without that. So I think that that one definitely needs to be appreciated a little bit more. But definitely subscribe, like, comment. We appreciate all of the above. Thank you for watching Redoing Reels, and I'll be back soon.